Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I have something special here. It's a Voodoo 5 5500 and it's in for servicing. So the problem the owner that I know has with this card is uh, he uh, complains about uh, very poor image quality. Uh, so that I like uh, so there's like, he said, just like lines and waves and so on on the image, on the monitor. And uh, this has happened recently, from what I understand. I know somewhat of the history of this card because I know the owner. So he find this, found this card in a loot of computers he bought. A whole bunch of them and the crappiest one that they were about to throw away. Like a modified compact, probably like spray painted black and stuff and you know, completely, you know, Perfectly retro ruined back in the day, what you did when you were trying to mod on a budget or something. But in that system, this card was in the system. So this got saved and it apparently ran fine. You know, it was a working card, it looks good, it looks really good actually. And uh, he used it for a while in different systems for benchmarking and stuff like that. And uh, put it on a shelf for a long time and then took it out again. And uh, now the card is. Uh, Ex exhibiting poor image quality. Also, one of his friends helped him apparently try to install drivers and stuff later, and they wouldn't install, and 3D Mark wouldn't run. I have actually ran 3D Mark on this card, so the drive is installs fine, but the image quality is poor. It's uh, a lot of wavy lines, so like so. And uh, the, when you install drivers, that goes somewhat away, but in BIOS and POST it's horrible, and in failsafe modes in Windows. And uh, even with drivers installed, it's somewhat noticeable, but it seems to be less. So, what I'm suspecting here, and what usually happens sometimes with uh, old cards and hardware, is that we have electrolytic caps here, one row here, and one row here. For uh, I suppose it's for the V-Core for the VSA 100s here, the ships that constitute the 4 and 5. We got some over here too. Then we got two big caps here. Those I recognize from the stamps and calling and so on. I think those are Philips and they should be polymer. What can happen with electrolytics is that as the card is in storage, obviously the electrolyte can degrade, but they also have like O rings and stuff in the bottom. So the polymers are technically dry and these are wet electrolytics. So what can happen is when you power something on that has been in storage for a long time and like a 20 year old hardware, something like this, is that uh, well the, the caps get hot and it's a aluminium casing so they swell and the o-rings might actually be dry in the bottom so they start to leak and basically they're ticking time bombs so you're pushing the enable button and the countdown starts when you power it on the first time after years of being in storage for example. And, uh, I think it was stored in an addict, and addicts tend to have like not uh, humidity and uh, temperature is not controlled. And that can uh, make it even worse because then the calves are hot in the summer, like really hot. It can be quite 40 50 centigrade in an addict. And then the winter is negative, so it can uh, ruin the o rings in the bottom. So, what I think has happened here is because of the description how the card behaved from. When you got it until it starts to fail, is uh, that the caps have started to degrade. It probably started leaking in the bottom, maybe, due to rings. And these caps, I mean, you get 10 of them for a euro or something, and they're fairly easy to replace. So it's easy to swap them. So I'm going to put this card in the system and see if we can do some screen capture. You can see the artifacting, we can call it. And then I think we replace the caps and then we try it again. So I booted up uh, Windows 98 in safe mode because it's more representative of uh, how the BIOS and post screen looks. And uh, like I mentioned before, the the uh, image calling isn't as bad when the driver is loaded, but it is there, but it's very noticeable without any drivers in 640x480, so uh, you can see it here, should be quite clear. 
So you can see how how the pixels basically moving uh, horizontally, the lines. And if we do like uh, shut down the computer, we get this image here with the pixels. It really shows the pixel moves around how bad the image quality is. And I suspect this is due to bad caps. So my plan is here first to hook up the oscilloscope to one of the caps and actually see if we can measure some uh, some ripple and stuff. Just for science I suppose I can just replace the caps but it'd be quite interesting to actually see if there is measurable ripple on there. And we could also compare later with new caps. So I hook up a couple of wires, so I have something to hook up my oscilloscope to. So here we have a capture from my oscilloscope. We can do it again if we want. We can press run here. And it will capture a million samples at 24 megahertz. And we can ignore this 2 volt div here. But it's 3 volts around here. I measured 2.94 on the board uh, here. And uh, yeah, it said 3 volts too, but sometimes I get some weird stuff with this program. But that's beside the point, but we can already see like all these spikes. It's a lot because it's supposed to be three volts from zero to here. This is a lot like 10% or more. So you can zoom in. You can really see how the voltage is bouncing around on that cap next to the VGA connector. And I'm pretty sure that it's filtering the V core for the VS, VSA 100 chips. So if we were to run a 3D mark or something, we would probably see even worse results here. So yeah, you're not supposed to see stuff like this on caps. So I think the bad image quality and probably maybe the instability that I talked about might be due to the caps. Why, what, why it runs 3D mark for me right now, I can't say. I only ran one round, but it could be two multiple reasons why it passed here and not there. You know, different power supply, caps being cold might help or something, could just be. A lot of factors that made it run for me enough to get one pass through. But yeah, if we replace the caps here and measure again, I think we're gonna have a much better results than this. So, it's time to replace the caps. Just gonna remove the old cables here, and the cables for the oscilloscope testing. So I removed the cap, so it's time to clean what's left of the legs here.
For caps, I have some new ones here. The old ones were 10 microfarads, these are 2. The old ones were 16 volt, and these are 35. That's just the rating, what they can take, so that doesn't matter. And high voltage rating usually means lower ESR anyway, so these should technically, if everything else is equal, be better. So we will use these. So I'm gonna hook up the wire test wires here again so we can measure the ripple. Actually see it made any difference. So the card is recapped now and uh, we can test it. And check for ripple and image quality. We are back here with the oscilloscope here and I took a capture here. I still have some big spikes here and there I see. But overall, it's a lot less. So there's another capture, so almost nothing. But these caps are basically identical to the original ones, so you can see here. And I have this either here, uh, even with uh, no power to the card. I just think it's interference. Oscilloscope is quite cheap, so it's not like I'm getting very accurate data. But I get a pretty good picture, like from like comparing A to B, so this is way better than what we had before. And uh, yeah, we're gonna check image quality now, when we have checked uh, the uh, rail here. I'm booted into safe mode, because I don't want the drivers loaded. So I get the uh, 64 by 480 and so on, uh, where the artifacts are up the most. And if you're looking closely, you probably already see it's much better. I already knew that when I did the oscilloscope testing, obviously, because I checked that the card actually worked. So, image quality is fixed. So, you can see here, and we can probably do the shutdown test here with the. Yeah, and the grid, it's perfectly solid, like it's not moving around or anything. So, it definitely seems like the caps were the issue. So, I'm actually gonna shut it down now, and we're gonna boot it into Windows with some. Uh, with some drivers instead, but before I do that I'm just gonna remove the uh, wires for the oscilloscope, I don't need them anymore. So, here we are in Windows with the Voodoo 5 5500. So we can go to settings here, let's check uh, through defix info, current display, so we have VSA 100, PCI, 64 megabytes of RAM, two chips, uh, 166 megahertz memory, so the same as I would treat 3000 BIOS 1.11 And these are the last official drivers, there is a later beta driver too So yeah 
and uh, image quality is good. Can run 3D Mark 2000. That's what was he tested, so that's what you're gonna check with here. See how that looks and runs. Then a new, new custom here. And do a benchmark. This is running on a Pentium 3 700 and 933, so it's not a particularly fast system for this card, I think. But uh, yeah, that's my testing system, and it's fine enough. So we got to 3,700 points or thereabout. I got the uh, ran this test before, so I passed here 0.7 before at some point. But I'm really not interested in uh, like trying to max out this card. Just want to make sure it actually works as supposed to, and uh, the problems are fixed, and they seem seems to be fixed. So here is the finished card. We have replaced the electrolytic 10 microfarad, microfarad capacitors which improved the uh, ripple quite a lot so I reduced it by at least 95% uh, I think these could have been uprated to maybe 22 I don't see any harm in that and uh, people I've seen people use uh, tantalum and stuff I haven't tried that obviously as this is my first card with a 5500 also, I didn't have these caps, but I realized I had uh, a thousand microfarads once. The original ones are a hundred and four seventy, and the only things these do is filter incoming five volt and twelve volts. So one goes to the uh, twelve volt, and one goes to the five volt, volt, and then ground. So the values, the way I see it, aren't that important as long as they're equal or better should be fine so 2000 total isn't that much your motherboard can have like uh, 6000 10000 depends uh, so relatively speaking this is not a lot anyway and uh, original values are probably based on what uh, like the minimum required to get uh, the desired filtering that I want and bulk capacity so I used these because I had them. They were quite, they're out of stock in Europe on like Conrad. I can buy them from US from Mauser, but the shipping is like 10 times more than the caps. So went this route and this time here, I think that'd be perfectly fine. The card works fine with these. So let's just make sure we don't get uh, these, the old ones degrade. The can, polymer can degrade too, obviously over time being used, but they're not as susceptible as electrolytics that don't like to be stored over time either. These should uh, be much better for long-term storage. So yeah, the card is ser fully serviced now, fully working, no uh, bad image quality. So it's ready to go back to the owner. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels, where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.